So Optimus is a channel that really isn't commentary material most of the time. He usually calls out harassment of creators and talks about current events, so there usually isn't much argumentation. However, he made a video on a review of the new Sonic movie, and needless to say, I didn't really like it. That's realistically all the context you need, so let's start this thing, I guess. Step back, I think I'm more of it! I think that this is a complete garbage review, and I'm gonna go and just pretty much tear this thing apart uh, as someone who, once again, isn't even a huge fan of Sonic. If I'm being honest with you guys, I haven't played a Sonic game probably since the GameCube, dude. It's been, I was probably like eight years old last time I can remember playing one of these things, man, and I didn't even see the first movie. I've heard a lot of really good things about this new movie. People have even said that it made them emotional when they watched it in theaters and stuff. From what I've heard, it's a pretty goddamn good movie, which is why I'm waiting for it to be like, oh, you can rent it at home or whatever. I like watching movies that way personally because theaters, at least around me, oftentimes they're overpriced, they're dirty and gross. They you know, they don't clean them very well. You're watching a movie with like 50 other people, so you're basically rolling the dice on who you're watching the movie with and whether or not they're gonna be obnoxious the entire time. Just not really an experience for me personally. I don't judge anybody for doing so though. I've heard that this is a damn good movie. So anyway, let's go ahead and start diving into this review because I'm gonna tear this thing apart. This was very unnecessary to put it lightly. We really didn't need to know about your experience with the Sonic franchise and how you haven't played a Sonic game in forever. We really didn't need to know about the common consensus on the new movie and how now it's a damn good movie. And we really didn't need to know about your opinion on going to the movie theater. Furthermore, we are 2 minutes and 32 seconds into this video, and only now is he starting to respond to the review. Like, all you needed to say in the entire beginning section was that you're responding to a bad review of the second Sonic movie. Jim Carrey has announced that he's leaving acting behind him. Yeah, I'm retiring. The actor 60 told Access Hollywood, I've had enough, I've done enough, I am enough. Go with God, Jim, but the comedy great's possibly final film, Sonic the Hedgehog 2, isn't exactly going out on top. Two years ago, the first Sonic was a surprise hit for Paramount even after a wave of bad press saying the terrifying CGI hedgehog we saw in the trailer was the stuff of nightmares. The filmmakers gave the little guy a makeover and the movie made a respectable $319 million at the box office. At that point, Sonic should have scooped up his magical golden rings and like Carrie called it quits, but oh no, Hollywood's ravenous appetite is never fully satisfied. And so now we have an often grating sequel that shoves in more of Sonic's annoying animal friends. In this formulaic plot, his nemesis Dr. Robotnik, Jim Carrey, has been trapped on the mushroom planet, holy shiitake he yells, since the end of the last adventure, but manages to escape and helps a red echidna named Knuckles find the legendary Master Emerald. You know what? I actually want to address the original video, particularly the Sonic's annoying animal friends part. Cause annoying on its own is a vague catch-all buzzword. Like, what am I, as a member of the audience, supposed to take away from something as vague as the word annoying? I haven't seen the movie myself, so I can't even come to a conclusion on my own. I know that the elaborate card is pretty overused, but like, come on, man. Okay, so, uh, this is like basic Sonic knowledge, you know, like I know what the Master Emerald is, I know who like Dr. Robotnik and all these people are, so like I know a basic amount about the film to where I can respond to this shit, so it uh, apparently was supposed to not work out too well for the first movie here, uh, because of it having the terrifying hedgehog. I remember when that was like a big meme and everything. Yeah, it's almost like that's what happens when these people listen to their audience, you know, when people give criticism or feedback and they actually work on their craft and fix things. It's almost like when you do that, people are very appreciative, at least in some instances like this, and it did good at the box office. Well, apparently the second one just doesn't hold up, man. It just, it, it should have never happened because it shoves in more of Sonic's annoying animal friends. You mean the other characters in the fucking Sonic universe? Like, this is the most ridiculous point I've ever heard someone criticize a movie for. This would be like if you criticized, uh, like, Marvel Endgame for adding in some of the other Marvel characters that weren't Spider-Man. Or if, like, with the new Dragon Ball movie that comes out, you know, it was great when there was Goku, but he had to add in his annoying alien friend Piccolo and Vegeta, like, but why would you add these annoying assholes into the movie? Probably because they're part of the universe. Have you never played a Sonic game before? Like, is this your first time hearing about Knuckles and Tails and all these other people, bro? Well, first of all, I don't really know why you're addressing the part about the original bad Sonic CGI design, because that was only briefly mentioned in passing, and it wasn't even really a criticism of the movie. But more pressingly, just because the Sonic series has these other characters, that doesn't mean that the reviewer has to be okay with them being in the movie. Movie. The reviewer can just simply dislike these characters in the film. So this feels like an excuse 
rather than an actual argument. Not only that, but you have completely missed the point of contention here. Sonic's friends being in the movie wasn't the problem, since the reviewer said that they were annoying. And as vague as that point might have been, and I'll admit that it is very vague, at the same time though, no, that's no excuse for missing the point this badly. Like, I doubt that the reviewer would use a word like annoying, which has an inherently negative connotation to it if it wasn't a criticism in the first place. I'm gonna assume that the person writing this article is probably twice my age because, well, I mean, I'm still pretty young at least. How is it that I, as a, what, what am I, what, a Gen Z, I think is what they call us? How am I in Gen Z and I know more about Sonic than someone who was probably born in like the 80s, right? During like the heyday of Sonic. Growing up during the heyday of Sonic. Wait, so you know that your point is entirely an assumption, so it's not based on any existing evidence, and yet you still made it. Do I even need to be here anymore? His annoying animal friends. Yeah, once it, it'd be like watching Spongebob and it'd be like, well, his annoying friend Patrick and Sandy and Squidward. What the fuck do you even mean by that? So you admit that the complaint was about Sonic's friends being annoying, and yet you're still resorting to the point of, these are the other characters in the series. Furthermore, you're starting to drag out this point to an obnoxious degree. You already had fine enough examples with Dragon Ball and Marvel earlier in the video. This would be like if you criticized uh, like Marvel Endgame for adding in some of the other Marvel characters that weren't Spider-Man. Or if like with the new Dragon Ball movie that comes out, you know, it was great when there was Goku, but he had to add in his annoying alien friend Piccolo and Vegeta. Like, <laughs> why would you add these annoying assholes into the movie? Probably because they're part of the universe. And yet you still feel the need to use another example with Spongebob? Really? Like, oh my god, they actually wrote a plot around the entire universe. It, it, they did fan service. They wrote a legitimate plot that involved more than one character. Like, what, do you have a pea brain? Can you not keep up with more than one character at a time? Nope, it's just that he found the characters to be annoying. Once again, if this guy was reviewing a Marvel movie, which no disrespect to Marvel because I fucking love Marvel movies myself, if he was watching a Marvel movie that had 19 superheroes in it, this guy would be coming from his ass crack right now. The tears would be writing themselves into the script. Did you already use Marvel as an example? Man, you really want to hit that 10 minute mark. The gemstone, a cheap knockoff of the Ring of Power from Lord of the Rings, brings its owner's thoughts, good or bad, to light. Sonic, who makes his own lame swear joke, holy sherbert, must stop Robotnik while the blue dude's bland roommates from fictional Green Hills, California, uh, Sheriff Tom and Maddie, are at a wedding in Hawaii. For those of you who are curious which hotel is hosting the ceremony, the characters repeatedly remind us throughout the new Four Seasons Oahu. Uh, what is this, Sonic the Ad Man? Our hero was joined by Tails, a cutesy fox with a helium voice like Tails on a chalkboard that would be more at home on a kid's morning TV show than a cheeky live action movie. The whole enterprise is a textbook MacGuffin, a story in which the characters spend the runtime searching for a coveted object. The Master Emerald isn't quite the Ark of the Covenant, and Sonic and Pals don't make too many exotic stops. Just California, Siberia, and Hawaii. They don't solve complex clues as so much as stumble across buttons. Hey, uh, bud, I don't know if you realize this, but you realize the primary demographic of this movie is fucking kids, right? Oh, this voice is just too obnoxious for me. The character in the children's movie is just, it, it's too much for me, bro. It's too annoying. By the way, I've watched the trailer. I've heard the Tails voice. It seems pretty in line with what you would hear in any of the Sonic games that have his voice or anything that I can remember at least. Like, maybe I'm just remembering this wrong, but the Tails character in the movie sounds pretty accurate to what you hear out of the video games, which is what you would want in a movie like this. What the fuck is Tails supposed to sound like? He's a small little character, you know what I mean? He's not a 17-foot fucking mecha superhero or something. You want Morgan Freeman to voice him next time? I mean, honestly, who could really complain if Morgan Freeman voiced anybody? But I mean, you get my point, bro. Like, what, what are you even talking about? You know, if that really is how Tails sounds in the games, that doesn't suddenly mean that the reviewer has to be okay with it. He can still dislike the Tails voice here, even if it is accurate to the games. For all you know, the reviewer also has a problem with Tails' voice in the game too. And even if Tails is a small character, the reviewer can still dislike Tails' voice. Even if there is a reason for the problem, or at least this is what the reviewer has deemed a problem, well, that reason doesn't suddenly make the problem go away. The problem is still there. Yeah, people tend to find high pitches to be annoying. Like, I understand that anime girls tend to have high-pitched voices, and this is more or less an anime trope, but I still know that we are Japanese goblin is still used as a torture method. Make a stop! Please make a stop! 
Not until you admit that American animation is superior to anime. Then he makes a complaint because I guess they repeatedly mention the name of the hotel uh, because, you know, that wouldn't be part of the plot or anything since apparently there's a wedding where characters are taking place at, you know? You know, even though the story can still work without the repeated mentioning of a hotel, just don't have the characters say the hotel's name as much or just to make up a hotel, for example. And even if it is an ad, like, out of all movies you're complaining about it in, this is the one, pretty much every blockbuster movie I can think of has ads now integrated into it, you know? The character will be conveniently drinking a Pepsi, or something like that, or they'll turn on Netflix, right? Like, this is a common trope that happens in movies now, and for you to, like, single this movie off for that is weird. Even though I really don't know, at least from, like, the sound of it, it doesn't really sound like that's the intention, right? I just feel like this guy's nitpicking for the sake of nitpicking at that point. But even if almost every movie has has ads in it, that doesn't necessarily mean that the reviewer can't suddenly have a problem with what are essentially advertisements in this movie. The existence of ads in other movies doesn't necessarily make the ads in Sonic 2 not a problem to the reviewer. So bringing up how almost every other blockbuster has products in it kind of feels irrelevant. Like, let's apply this logic to other fields of critique, shall we? A lot of movies have plot holes, therefore your point is invalid. A lot of movies have annoying characters, therefore your point is invalid. See how faulty this point is? Granted, the issues I brought up could be seen as more detrimental to a film to some, but what's detrimental is subjective. Like, at the very least, I can admit that going ads bad is kinda nitpicky, for it doesn't really affect the movie's plot, I guess. But even then, I'd argue that movies aren't ads, so the audience shouldn't feel as if they're being advertised to. After all, a lot of people watch movies for the feeling of escapism. And on top of that, your nitpicking isn't really an argument. It's essentially just you going, small thing bad, when small thing can still be seen as an issue. Honestly, your nitpicking comes off as more dismissive than anything else. And after that, that's where the video ends, since Optimus does make good points against the review at the end of his video. And honestly, I don't have much in terms of final thoughts, other than excuses are not arguments or points of critique. But yeah, that's all I've really got, so my audience members can click off the video now. No, stop! What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing with your life?